in the field of genetics, today we have come to know that it is the sperm which is responsible for determining the sex of the child. And today science tells us that the 23rd pair of chromosomes in the human being, it determines the sex of the child. If it's XX, it's a female. If it's XY, then it's a male. So it is the sperm which is responsible for determining the sex. If the X of the sperm takes part in the fertilization, then a female is born. If the Y takes part, then a male is born. And this is exactly what the Quran says in Surah Najm, chapter number 53, verse number 45 and 46, that we have created the human being from a minute quantity of liquid which is ejaculated. Minute quantity of liquid, ejaculated means it has to be a male fluid. The similar message is repeated in Surah Qiyama, chapter number 75, verse number 37 to 39, that we have created the human being from a minute quantity of sperm. Nutfatun min man yumna. We have created the human being from minute quantity of sperm, then made it into an alaka, then made the alaka into mudga, then gave it sex, male and female. So the Quran says that the sperm is responsible for the sex of the child, whether it's male or female. In this country of us, this great country, India, for reasons known best to the Indians, in India mainly, most of the people, they prefer having sons rather than daughters. And if a lady gives birth to a daughter, very often the mother-in-law, she will blame the daughter-in-law. That why did you give birth to a daughter? According to the science and the Quran, if the mother-in-law has to blame anyone, she should not blame the daughter-in-law, she should blame the son. Because it is the male fluid which is responsible for discipline the sex of the child, male or female. Actually, it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who makes it male or female. But if the mother-in-law has to blame anyone, she should blame the son. Because he is responsible for the sex of the child, male or female.